I, okay. I, I'm really happy that you're here. And for uh, Jennifer, I'm not exactly sure uh, that uh, you were um, before that, that you were on anything that I've done, but I thought I would just start the first few minutes and just give a brief rundown of my personal history because I, I've known Alice through classes. I've known Donna for years now, uh, you know, through various other venues, a writing venue and, and now, uh, you know, the uh, work that she does for me personally and for Rays of Healing. And I've known Christine um, through Rays of Healing and also through my Reiki uh, mm -hmm. stuff. And I've been, uh, you know, working intimately with her on this, on this project. The foundation uh, that, that you started is, is amazing. And the HEAL project is under the foundation. So, and really, really, really important stuff is happening. And it's, it's all, it all seems to be ground roots. It all seems to, you know, start with somebody's idea. And that idea gets fleshed out and fleshed out and fleshed out. Um, my background is, is strictly that I basically um, have recently had the experience of many, many people coming to me and, and saying, what is my sole purpose? What am I here to do? Really? What, why am I on this planet? And I recognize that I can usually get to the exact um, uh, important like nitty gritty of what they need, what, what they have just by listening to my guides. And this basically all started with me at age four where that's my earliest memory. When I looked up at the sky and I said, who am I and what am I here for? And uh, I didn't know the answer to those questions, but I knew with complete certainty that I was old and I knew what old meant and I'm four. So effectively, it, I already had a sense of something much bigger than I am. It's much bigger than the, you know, than, than that little four-year-old body, you know, uh, and enabled me. But uh, the other, the, I, the other thing is that I heard voices and I know I heard voices from the time I was eight. I can distinctly recall the first time that I heard voices and, um, and they always kind of gave me direction. They always kind of, uh, it, you know, it was like, whether it was to do my homework, whether it was to do something special, but that doesn't mean that I followed that direction. It's like, yeah, yeah, these are, you know, at, there, there were times in my life where I was pretty sarcastic uh, about it because the voices, you know, would say one thing, I'd do something else. And what I discovered ultimately was to my um, chagrin, to my uh, telling people that this is not the way uh, that I need to, uh, that, that uh, or, or just not telling others what was happening to me, basically not sharing anything because I never wanted to anybody to feel uncomfortable in my presence. And I never wanted anybody to, to say, uh, what is the, uh, you know, like, um, uh, why I don't get what you get, you know? So I didn't, I, I never wanted that to happen. So in the, in the eighties, when we moved to the house that we're currently in, in South, um, South Run, I literally had a spiritual practice that I did with complete regularity every single morning. 
And so part of that spiritual practice was reading spiritual books and uh, listening to just soft music going into meditation. And during one of those sessions, in, in the um, very loud and clear, those voices came out and said, you're to teach about God. And frankly, I got hysterical because of the fact that I felt I wasn't qualified to teach about God. I wasn't uh, given any kind of, of uh, information that made me feel like this is something that you want to do with your life. And so I started to literally cry convulsively. And I, and I said, I'm not a minister. I'm not a minister's wife. I'm not a minister's daughter. I have no qualifications to teach about God. So the voices, you know, they were so loud, so clear. It was almost like church bells pealing in my head, but they retreated and they realized I wasn't ready. So they kind of backed off and going into the 90s, I started to seriously follow my spiritual path. I was neck deep in real estate. Uh, feeling that, okay, this is my career. This is, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life, but feeling very uncomfortable about real estate, not really feeling that this was what I was supposed to do. Feeling like my um, monetary rewards for selling the homes that I sold were by far greater than anything I deserved. And all kinds of, you know, negative uh, options would come forward for me. So I started to really understand more of the fact that this is that that spirit wanted me to to follow a spiritual path. So then I started looking at everybody, every new person I met, looking at them saying, are you my teacher? Are you my teacher? And, and just being, you know, kind of um, giving them a, um, uh, like thinking, well, certainly if God wants me to teach about God, he's going to put a teacher in my path. And that's fortunately when I met Wanda. And uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you know Wanda, but, but I know Alice does, and Christine does, and uh, Donna does. But she then, I, I followed all the teachings that she uh, did. In fact, I took some of her courses three, four times, you know, just over and over and over. I became a minister with Rays of Healing Church. I was her first student, and uh, I, I have tried in every respect to keep this going. Um, and it just seems to be getting more and more difficult because of the fact that to keep a church going, you need, number one, you need contributions. And our contributions are, are, are down by like 60%. And number two, you need uh, participants. And since we went to strictly to Zoom, um, as long as we were on every week, we had a, a wonderful following. And now I noticed that the following seems to have gotten less and less and less. So um, I, don't, I don't know what the answer is, but uh, there's, there's, there's obviously um, uh, uh, the way that one of the gals, when we were, when we were trying to figure out the name of the church, uh, she said there's uh, forming, norming, storming, where everything goes wrong, and reforming, and then you start the cycle again. So I feel, um, well, good. Thank you that you'll spread the word in Asheville. Thank you. Uh, because at times we've had 27 people on. But like I said, when we had it weekly, um, there was a, a, a very devoted following. And then it just seemed to drop off, drop off, drop off, because it was every Monday night. And then Wanda wanted to go to this format because she wanted the Baltimore church who like to have their services on Saturday to be part of this. Well, it's Saturday today and there's not a member of, of the Baltimore church here. So anyway, 
<laughs> this is uh, um, uh, so so what happened to me though in the 90s was I started a course in miracles and uh, in the uh, 1990s uh, that then became I gave up all my connection to the Catholic Church and realized that the Catholic Church had for years not filled a need inside of me, but the Course in Miracles did. And then uh, it, uh, then I started to take the various Reiki sessions, uh, you know, Reiki one, Reiki two, Reiki three, Reiki master teacher. And I realized even after I took Reiki master teacher, I told the gal that I took it from Ruth Landigan in, um, in, uh, uh, Terra Krista in, in Vienna, that I have no intention of teaching uh, Reiki. I just want to take everything that Reiki has to offer. And she looked at me immediately and said, Alice, don't never say never. And uh, so then within six months, I taught my first class and I've taught monthly ever since then. And that was over 20 years ago. So I have, um, I, uh, only once a year will I teach Reiki Master Teacher, but uh, three times a year, Reiki one, three times a year, Reiki two, three times a year, Reiki three. And in the, um, but what I recognized, I also started to do a lot of spiritual counseling along with the, the Reiki instruction and that just <clears throat> from the spiritual counseling also came the readings, the readings seemed absolutely natural to me because giving readings um, effectively for me was listen, connecting with the energy of the person in front of me and having my energy kind of surround them, but also just listening to my guides and letting, letting my guides take over for the reading and not having any type of, of um, uh, you know, like fear or that I was going to give wrong information or, or anything like that. And I, I also recognized, though, that the counseling that I used to give many times fell on deaf ears because I would give a person five to 10 different reasons why they should follow a different path, why they should do something. But if they weren't committed to their own healing, they weren't, basically, they weren't going to listen. They weren't going to hear it. And even though, yes, they, they listened to what I had to say, they didn't follow any of the suggestions because the next time around when we'd kind of like go, there was no forward movement, you know, when we'd have another round of, of sessions and versus like when I worked with Christine, every single time we had a session, it was like, oh my God, she came in with reams and reams and reams of information that she then did on her own because this was what spirit was saying for her to do big difference big big difference and uh effectively not only did has she set up a 501c3 but now she started this project and while she's waiting for funding to come in she's starting to do it uh virtually you know which is to me that's just her proving to spirit how committed she is to this that you know one thing is not going to stop her she's going to try another try a third try a fourth so anyway um this is there is a, a passage in a course in miracles that says you have to give spirit a, and and when they say spirit they're talking about the holy spirit the voice for god the voice that that is with us, present with us at all times. You have to give the Holy Spirit a little bit of willingness to do, to contact you, 
to be a part of your life, to give that, you know, you the direction that you need. And just like what Alice just said, that a red flag goes up when the direction that when somebody proposes something and that just doesn't feel right, that you will know inside of you that, hey, I don't like the sound of this. I don't feel good when I am listening to what you are saying. I just, I'm not open to it. So I have a, uh, I just really feel that in my case, my counseling has always been upbeat and positive so that the person in front of me always felt that they were going to get um, something that could give them, uh, the word I'm getting is like marching orders, you know, a way to do something that, uh, a way to complete a task, a way to be, uh, to move forward with it. And when there isn't forward movement, there's a reason. And whether spirit reveals that reason to us or not, it doesn't matter. There is a reason and you have to trust in that reason. And you have to trust that the floodgates will open for you when, uh, when you are ex exactly, uh, you know, when the timing is exactly right for you. And um, anyway, uh, let's see what else I wanted to cover with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, like I said, the, the, my counseling always ends up being positive and upbeat. And it always boils down to you can do this. Because I love the saying that Henry Ford said, and I don't repeat it that often, but it's whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So whether you think you can do something or think you can't do something, you're correct because you're gonna follow that train of thought. You're gonna follow that logic. You're gonna follow um, whatever stumbling blocks are put in your way uh, unless you choose to do otherwise, unless you choose to, to say to, um, to yourself, basically, to your higher self, that I don't care what is in my path. I'm going for it. I'm shooting for the moon. I'm reaching for the star. I don't care how many stumbling blocks are in my way or who's telling me I can't do it or who's saying that this is foolish. You don't listen to that. You listen to your own voice, your own encouragement, your own cheerleading team that comes in and gives you exactly what you need. So the, the thing that um, obviously one of the things we need right now and for any of those who will uh, join us in the future, because I do know that when people don't come on, they, they, they do um, uh, you know, uh, come in and uh, just take this at their convenience, but we do need contributions. We are in very, very, very big need of contributions. So as, as well as every good thing that is out there that you want to do, money is an exchange for what you offer. You, you get, receive money for the gifts that you have to bring. And um, basically that is about what I wanted to share with you about my path. And uh, like I said, the last time I, I gave a reading, there was 27 people online. Uh, this time I will give you as much time as you want because there's three of you online. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, and we literally have uh, till 12.15. So 
um, you can easily have at least 10 minutes a piece because then, then we'll just do a closing prayer or 10 or more minutes, you know, just a few more minutes that, you know, uh, and everything. And I think Christine, no, Jennifer, you were on first, right? You, you came on first, I think, right? Yes, let them go first. Yeah, she was on first. And, and also- And then the Alice ones, was in there. And, and then <laughs> I'll have you. Okay, so, because I, I mean, I'm always prepared to do 30 readings and uh, in as, as fast as I can. And uh, that just doesn't happen, you know. And plus it's a holiday, but hey, yeah. I'm not gonna complain, us ladies, you know, that are on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just happy, you know, to have people in, uh, in general, uh, because mm -hmm. of the fact that I know it's a holiday weekend. And when I signed up for this, I took it because I figured some somebody else, I'd give them a break, because I wasn't able to get on the, the previous three times. And yeah. uh, this time, I could get on I wasn't going anywhere. And uh, anyway, so I thought I'd, I'd give other people a break and, and everything. But uh, Anyway, all right, let's, uh, yep. let's begin. Jennifer, what is your last name? Um, it's Jackson. Jackson. Well, actually, that's my, 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 uh, my given name is Jennifer McKernan. I uh, never switched my name back. Oh, okay. So no, I go by Jackson, but my, I was born Jennifer Elizabeth McKernan. McKernan. McKernan, yeah. Okay, MC. what's on your driver's license? Uh, Jennifer Jackson. Okay, let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> let's go with that. Are you two related? You have similar smiles. No, we're just, just friends. Wow, wow, you have similar, uh, there's something similar in your countenance and, and uh, everything. <laughs> so at least that's what I'm picking up. So anyway, all right. Um, I'm gonna do my prayer of connection and I'll only do it once. And then uh, Jennifer, uh, since I don't think you've ever had a reading from me. No. Uh, so have a question or two or three uh, ready that you want information on. And okay. I'll tell you what I see, what I hear, what I feel. Alice and Christine are, are familiar with my format. So uh, they don't, yeah, they don't, they don't need that. But anyway. Um, very gently close your eyes, take a deep breath in, exhale, dear Mother, Father, God, divine, infinite spirit, source of all that is, I ask to be connected to you, to my higher self, and to the higher self of everyone here present, I ask for the assistance of the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters, the Reiki masters, but most especially Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi, Saint Francis, Saint Germain, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Michael, the Blessed Mother, the Divine Feminine, Mary Magdalene, Moses, Metatron, Melchizedek, Mohammed, and Kuan Yin. I ask that we be cleared, centered, aligned, balanced, and grounded, and that whatever come in for Jennifer come in for her highest good. I also ask to be a clear channel of light for Metatron and his healing angels so that Jennifer receive the highest vibrations of light possible. Also ask for the assistance of the great rays, the lords and masters of the rays, and the archangels of the rays. I ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the name of I am. And when it's time to turn to Alice and Christine, I ask that they in turn receive messages that are for their highest good. I ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the name of I am. And Jennifer, when I said my prayer, I tap into your energy field. 
And um, I got an image and you're gonna have to help me with, with this. The image was one of a male, uh, had a sense of a, that it was a part of you, maybe not fully you, but a part of you, but a male who got caught in a spider web and didn't recognize that the spider web, granted, a spider web woven together, the strands of a spider web can be as strong as silk, but a spider web by itself is not strong. But yet the sense that I had is this male was absolutely felt like he was stuck, um, what, couldn't move, couldn't, uh, couldn't get to where he wanted to go. Um, it, was, it was as if the strands, instead of being um, as flimsy as they are in a spider web, were almost like thick ropes that were trapping him. Does that in any way, shape or form relate to anything you're experiencing right now? Do you feel trapped by something? Uh, do I, or does a male in my life feel that way? Well, I, uh, it could be a male, but I also feel it's part of you. I, yeah, I feel trapped. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, because, yeah. uh, and it, I mean, it could be somebody else too, but we're not here to discuss them. We're here to, yeah. to, to discuss you. So go ahead and use that as a springboard for your question or any other thing that you want. You know, you're, you're welcome to ask, ask a question on anything. Okay. Um, well, uh, well, my first thought when you said the spider web thing was that you maybe were talking about my ex-husband, but, um, but I'm not, he's not in my questioning today. So, um, uh, yeah, so my, um, my biggest thing I think for me is like, I'm, I'm love driven. <laughs> and, uh, even though I'm like going to school for acupuncture, I always cry with this stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so um, even though I'm going to school and I've got like these career goals and everything, like the most important thing to me in life is to find my soulmate. And I know soulmates are not like, you know, but like in using that word as like a way to describe the type of connection I want with someone. Um, and I just... I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and um, <laughs> gone through a lot of stuff, like, you know, marriage that ended and all of that. And I just want to know, that. I want to know if it's, if it's coming and I don't know, I don't know how to formulate a question around that. I just, um, I want to be able to balance my career path and my focus in becoming the best practitioner that I can be and being in the like the best place to practice that's going to you know fulfill my career but at the end of the day what's most important to me is that I'm I'm also able to like realize that love and that 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 dream so okay all right then this explains the first part of the uh of the sensation that came through me I, uh, as I was watching that, just before I watched, you know, that, that spider web type of thing, what I felt was I, that I was in your mind and it's the only way I can describe it is you were overthinking everything. <laughs> I mean, you're like, you're going in this direction, this direction. Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, what about this? And and you're just moving in so many directions that you are. And all I'm going to do is repeat what I'm what I'm hearing. So don't take offense at this. Yeah. That you can be your worst enemy because you will not sit in silence 
and just allow spirit to come in and help you. You're flailing so badly that you, you just cannot get over the fact that we have, you know, that, that you have a whole team of people around you wanting to help you out. And the, what, what caused the breakup, the, the marriage, it feels like it lasted what, like three years, four years, five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, the marriage itself lasted about three, four years. Yeah. Oh, okay. What caused the breakup? It, it feels like it, there, the, that it was something really kind of stupid, basically yeah. like silly or something or other. Yeah. We just, we were just roommates and we just didn't know how to make each other happy. And it was just like a, like little stuff, just, you know, piling on, like, we just couldn't, we couldn't meet each other. We okay. couldn't connect. We couldn't um, emotionally fulfill the other person's needs like it just it just didn't work okay um, okay because the the sense i have jennifer is that again i just don't take this personally you just have to mature you have to grow up you have to stop being have have a child like a childish response to what is troubling you, like my prince will come. Your prince, might, your soulmate might be your worst enemy <laughs> because he, in being your worst enemy, is the one who's going to help you grow the most. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you might hate it. So it might be that you've already gone through that, you know, that you've already recognized that. And you're just going to have to calm down and allow spirit to play a much bigger role in your life than, 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 because there's so many parts of you that feel you're in command, you know, and when you're and when things don't work out the way you want them to work out, you've blown it. And man, have you blown it big. This, this is you talking to you. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, you're so hard on yourself. You're effectively your judge, jury, and executioner <laughs> all rolled into one. And you're just giving yourself so much more angst than you need to deal with. Am I making any sense to you? Yeah. And it's, I feel like, you know, I have cultivated my you know, like throughout the time that I've been in school, I feel like I have cultivated more or I've tried to cultivate more of a connection to spirit. But at the same time, because I'm so stressed out with school that I, I feel like in a lot of ways I revert backwards into like old patterns and I feel restless. Like I feel like I can't relax and I have no sense of inner peace okay. and I feel very disconnected from spirit. Whereas three years ago, I felt much more connected, you know? <laughs> and so I've, you know, I've gone through periods of my life where I, I have been connected and I have like followed that guidance and I have felt more at peace in myself. And I feel so far away from that, from all that progress that I made. And I don't know how to exist in the life that I have, that I'm living in right now and maintain that. Yeah. And you're going to have to go back there. You're going to have to go back because otherwise there is no peace for you. And without peace, your life is a, all frazzled ends. It's all like, you know, you take a mop and you singe every single end. And that's, that's basically what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and, and that's not good, that's not healthy. And, uh, and you're, you, whatever you did then to maintain, to get to that state of peace, whether it was a meditation practice, uh, find a way to fit it in now. Find a way. Because staying frazzled, it's not only is it going to take your, it's toll on your, well, it's already taken its toll on your, 
emotions. It's taken its toll on your mental body, your, your emotional body, but it's going to take a toll on your physical body, you know, if it hasn't already. And uh, the, the thing is that you, you know, that, that whole frazzled feeling is, is not anything that you want to continue following. That's not a path you want to continue following. You just don't. Because if you do, you're going to take that into your practice. Yeah. And you don't want to do that either. Because people are going to pick it up from you. And then they're, they're going to say, well, no, thank you. You know, they're, they're just going to feel it. They're going to sense that. So this, that you've got, you had it at one time, you can bring it back. You know how to, to get there. It's all inside of you. Bring it back. Okay. Bring it back. Because that you're, you really owe it to yourself as a, and, and only then when you bring back that peace, will you attract the right partner that's when the right partner is going to come in. I mean, can you imagine what your life would be like if you had, you're a frazzled mess and you attract a frazzled mess into your life? I mean, then, then you have a double. It's, it's, it's like you've got a dual problem to work to, and you can't solve somebody else's problems. They have to solve them themselves. They just have to. And if they're not willing to, and you're not willing to accept them with their problems, then you have to part depart from that okay because you already had the experience of a marriage that went sour so you don't need to do it again you don't want to have two under your belt that go sour just because you didn't get yourself to a place of peace and harmony and balance and alignment and then, then, then all that stickiness from that web will just dissolve. Well, you'll see it for what it is. It's nothing. You can get through that web. You can just break every, every one of those pieces with no effort whatsoever. Or I should say, they're correcting me. It's not, that's no effort. It's minimal effort. You know, it'll be minimal effort, but you've got to calm down. You have to stop overthinking everything. You've got to allow spirit to, to play a major role in your life. Okay. And now I can understand why there's so few people here because you really needed to hear every bit of this. And in a, a two or three minute reading, you wouldn't have gotten it, yeah. you know, and everything. But in, does that feel like something you can do for yourself? How does that feel? So I'm aware that I need to do that. And I I'm aware of myself spinning out of control. I just don't know how, like, I don't know, like what, like, because I feel like the choices that I'm making are making that harder. Like, for instance, I just accepted two jobs because I'm running out of money and I can't pay for my last year of school. And so I'm feeling financially stressed and then I'm putting a toll on my time and my, you know, my, my, my time outside of school because now I'm working. And so I feel like I'm just like, like choices like that, that are made out of my perceived necessity are making it harder and harder to make these changes because they're putting me in this other, you know, stressed state of mind, you know, sure. they're furthering that stressed state of mind. So I don't know how to break out of that mindset. <laughs> like, I don't know the first step, you know? Okay. Quit one of the jobs, quit the one that pays the least, that's that's step number one. Take a loan for the second job as and just pay it as you can as you develop your practice. A, a, you know, a school loan is not the end of the world. You know, and and for those of us who had to pay everything out of pocket ourselves, I, I uh, really I know that that doesn't feel good. Uh, to take out a loan. You would rather pay as you go, but um, not at the expense 
of a nervous breakdown, not at the expense of you spinning out of control of you, you know, just in, in your mind, knowing that I can't handle this, but yet I feel I have to not good. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. The problem is the one that pays the least is the least stressful. The one that pays the most is the most stressful. <laughs> so, so okay. yeah. <laughs> How do you, how can you alter that stress? How can you change that stress? Is there, are you taking on, uh, I mean, is, does it mean you come in 10 minutes earlier to get prepared for it? You know, think of the, the, the steps you can take to reduce the stress. Because in every single job, there are steps that you can take, okay? And if worse comes to worse, take the one that pays the, the, the less. If, if it just is that awful for you. Because with both of them and the class and studies, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. It ain't gonna work. And all you're going to do is you're going to feel like a hamster in a cage, you know, running, running on this wheel, wheel, you know, just going faster and faster and faster and, and absolutely getting nowhere. And you'll, you'll take all the joy out of your life. Okay. Is that, does, is that, does that make sense to you? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had resistant um, I've been very resistant. I've been looking for a job, looking for a job. And then when I accept it, I have this like terrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. <laughs> like, you know, so I've been forcing myself to work, but I like really don't want to, um, but I'm and doing don't. it anyway. So I'm not listening to my inner voice. Because <laughs> that, that resistance wouldn't be there. That yeah. resistance absolutely would not be there if that was the right thing for you to go. You would step into it joyously. Yeah. That was your feelings are what connect you to God. And so you cannot ignore your feelings. You can't pretend you're not having those feelings because you're having them. So, and, and you're not doing yourself a favor and, and God forbid that you attract anybody into your life right now. <laughs> you just, it, that person would be a mess. So you do not want to, you want to get through this period, the whole uh, schooling thing behind you before you even start thinking of a romantic re relationship, you know, because you want to, uh, there's nothing so stressful as school because everybody is out there evaluating you, giving you marks, giving you grades. Oh, you're not quite good enough it's, it's horrible. School is a horrible period in your life and everything, but you're in your fourth year. So you're, you're at the end. So congratulate yourself for having gotten this, that part done, you know, yeah. and everything. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. And Alice will back up everything I've said. Because I don't think I don't think she she knows how I think, and and uh, so she's not gonna say, uh, you know, ignore this advice. You know, I I just know you won't. Haven't I been saying the same thing? I've been saying the same thing. What? I I've been saying the same thing. Excellent. Yeah, but people don't always listen to me. It's okay. You. I've listened to things you said. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. All right. All right. And Alice, give me your last name. It's Berg, B E R G. Berg. Okay. For the, I kept thinking Bailey and I kept saying, no, it's not Bailey. <laughs> I just, I think of a clown when I think of Bailey. I don't Do know. You really? Bailey Bar, uh, Barn, Barnum and Bailey Circus, something like that. So, anyway. Um, Alice Berg. Okay, let me just quickly connect to you.
Wow. Okay. Maybe maybe it's a clown reference. This is kind of interesting. As as I went to connect with you, when I saw you standing, you, you know those giant balls that the exercise balls. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So you're standing at the top, and it doesn't matter how you move, you keep your balance. Uh -huh. So that it, it doesn't matter if your body's going forward, backwards, side, side, you're keeping your balance. So that tells, again, I'm symbolically, I'm interpreting that as you juggling various factions, but evaluating them good, bad, indifferent, and not, not following, but also not necessarily feeling like you're ready to follow a certain one of the directions. In other words, I didn't see you really moving with that ball. I just saw you, you know, just kind of juggling and staying in place. But you're, like I said, you're in balance, you're in harmony, you are in alignment. But now there's something preventing you from forward movement. So again, is, is, is that any place that you're at right now? Yeah, so I just took all my, I, I took three board exams to get licensed and I just did that really quickly. And um, I'm practicing zero balancing on the side. I've been doing that during school, but I just feel, I feel like a slightly burnt out from the whole school thing, pretty tired. Um, and then I just feel like I've been offered two jobs so far and then had this other thing that I could go into business with my friend and nothing feels right. So, and I, I guess I could branch off on my own, which is kind of scary. So I just, I just haven't felt that kind of like, I want it to feel right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. And I just haven't had that. And, and then, I mean, working for the head of my school, you know, everything would have been provided. She's this huge clinic and everything, but she's, she can be a tough, she can be, she can be, um, yeah, she runs a tough ship, tight ship. So I just, it just didn't feel like it'd be resonant to strictly do acupuncture because I want to combine like the energy work and zero balancing and the acupuncture and crystals, like all of that stuff. I want to combine it. And I, I want the I, freedom is like really important to me to yeah. have that like ability to just kind of be with somebody and see what feels right in the moment to work yeah. with, with them. So I just like how to cultivate that and how to, to manage everything. Cause I just want to, I, I want to like, you know, keep in the flow of that. And I want to cultivate more with that, but I just feel like, yeah, I just, I guess direction <laughs> would be great. Okay. okay. Uh, Alice, what I'm hearing for you is keep the, the, the words, keep looking, kept mm -hmm. coming back and back and back. Keep the, looking. the things that you've been offered so far are absolutely not right for you. And again, there is a part of you that knows it. You're yeah. going to need, uh, I feel you will be more comfortable under the umbrella right now of somebody, but that person has to give you complete autonomy to yeah. run your practice exactly the way you want to run it. You have so much information. You have so much uh, yourself that you were um, that that you are. A, you know, you have so much ability, and you have so much wisdom to share that that people will see that and say, "Oh my God." Well, it's like, geez, I went in for one treatment, but I got two or I got three. Does, can you understand that? Yeah. I mean, right now also my sessions are way too long and I guess not sustainable for like, cause I charge for like one session. I charge for like an hour, what people charge for an hour, but I'll, I'll see people for two and two to three hours because I'm like doing whatever comes up. No, <laughs> Which don't do that. Is, I know. Yeah. Okay. But I, I, well, I just put it this getting, way. Put it this way, Alice. Uh, okay, this is this is how you're going to deal with that. You're going to have a card 
uh, that everybody is going to get, and it's going to be on your website, of your charges for the additional items. Oh. And there will be a fee for that. Oh. It'll be stated in advance how much you are, and, and then you will ask them, do you want the crystal healing? Do you want the zero balancing? Do you want, you know, whatever it is that you are offering? And, uh, and, and so they'll know in advance of them even coming to you that this is not included. You Yeah, so what, what happens though is I'm like doing like a zero balancing or something. And then like, I'll go to their head or I'll feel it before they even start working on them. And there's like a gnarly thought form thing that looks like this tentacle, like black thing in their head. And I'm like, well, that's not going to serve them to like move forward if they still have that. So then, and it takes a little bit to like sometimes move that. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but it, it seems to work to like move it, but it's, it's, it's a little exhausting. So I'll be like, I'll take the time to do that. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like, well, they didn't ask for that. And I decided to do it. That's you know another I mean? session. Okay. Tell them what you saw and tell them, ask them if they would like to come back for mm -hmm. another session. So you do not do it with the one. You, you, you do the, what you were, you know, what they came in for mm -hmm. and within the time frame. Because again, what's going to happen to you is you're going to burn out. I've already and burned out. The what? I've already burned out. <laughs> yeah. So, and you, you know, uh, because again, you've got one of these huge hearts that just wants to give, 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 give. And you can't do that without getting compensation for what you offer. Mm -hmm. So because money is an exchange. You yeah. offer a service, you get paid for it. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to burn out. Yeah, I also, I was meditating the other night and like, I met like a big, like a, like a dark part of myself that had this like value thing. Like, you know, that, that part in my, it was like coming from my heart and it was like a, it was definitely something that I was encountering with myself that I need to work through. Then I, I, I did like, I was sending it just love the other night when I was working through it, but it was definitely like a, like a little bit of like an energetic boulder of, of like this value thing and self-worth and all that kind of stuff. You know, it, it's common amongst this profession, but I encountered it within myself very strongly. All right. That's, that's a past life. Yeah. And that's where you were in a position of seeking power over somebody mm -hmm. rather than power for or power with so that and, and you're holding on to that thought that I could hurt another person I could hurt this mm -hmm. and and you know positively in this lifetime you're not going to hurt anybody and spirit mm -hmm. is not going to let you hurt anybody yeah. so when when that does encounter uh, if you encounter that, just know, okay, that's, thank you, uh, just for letting me know. And then you just see it disappear. You just visualize it leaving and how, mm -hmm. how you throw it overboard, you know, wrap it up in an avalanche, wrap it up in a big snowball, throw it over an ocean liner over thing, consume it in a fire, however you want to get rid of it, you know, get rid of it, but don't allow it to stay and don't allow it to affect your self-worth. Okay. You know, um, another quick, quick, I hope this is a quick question, but I'm wondering just in general, if I'm meant for like having a partner in this lifetime, because I had one, this was a whole thing with like Wanda before, like, um, it ended after three years, like I thought he was going to propose. He did not like a whole thing, but I've just been getting like, I'm not like pulled with that. Like I was thinking about it, thinking about it. And then all of a sudden I'm not like interested, right? Or I feel like it's not the time right at this moment. And I'm getting that right now. Um, but I'm just like, I don't know. I feel so different and alien with that. Like the healing part to me is like the most important stuff. Like this, this work feels, but I mean, I guess, you know, it would be nice at some point, but I'm just wondering if that's like part of my path. 
at all. Eventually. Okay. Not maybe not now while you're building up, you finally found the thing that you wanted to yeah. concentrate your attention to, but mm -hmm. eventually, yes, you will have a partner, but it'll be when you are settled inside yourself mm -hmm. that I am doing exactly what I want to be doing, exactly mm -hmm. how I want to be doing. You're not going to be in that, uh, all right, well, I'm still in my processing stage. I'm still in my, uh, you know, uh, getting my work together stage. Mm -hmm. You're going to be firmly settled in that. Okay. And then so. just, just like Jennifer, you will attract the right person mm -hmm. vibrationally for you. Okay. So just keep my eyes open for the opportunities and see what resonates with autonomy. And no compromise. Don't okay. compromise any part of yourself, especially because I, in, in the, what, 10 odd years that I've known you, I know how important spirit is to you and that anybody, you know, like trying to uh, tell you uh, somehow or other make it less important is an absolute no-no to you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Thank I mean, you. no compromise on that part. Okay. With the job right. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Sudi. All right. And Christine. <laughs> All right. Hi. And, <laughs> hi, sweetheart. And let me, let me um, just connect with you, Christine folks. Um, until... Wow, this, this is interesting, Christine. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to connect with you, and they've got mm -hmm. you behind a barrier. It's like they've put you in a steel vault, and I can't see anything that that they're not willing to show me. And right now, they're not willing to show me because I the sense that I have is is what they're doing behind the, the steel vault is that it's changing so rapidly that my telling you anything right now isn't even gonna be relevant in a day or two. Does, does that make any sense to you? It that, absolutely does because okay. one of my questions, I was like, well, let's leave the program off to the side since that's just going. Yeah. And I was going to ask about traveling and I wasn't going to ask it in a way about like, when am I going to move overseas? Yeah. But like more recently, I've been thinking about, well, well, maybe, you know, I can do a trip here and there. Maybe, you know, because I was thinking possibly if I'm still around, you know, come August, then, you know, I would go to Virginia at the end of September. So I said maybe before then I can go on a trip and then maybe after that go on a trip and then you know, stick around Virginia for my birthday and then finally move overseas in February. I was like, that's an idea. I said, otherwise I'll be happily gone in August. And, you know, like everyone else here wanting a man. And I said, instead of coming home and spending it with my, my 40th with my friends in Virginia, I was like, maybe I'll just take a trip with the dream boat guy, you know, you never know. So I was like, sorry, friends, but yeah. you know, so I was just like, you know, thinking of ideas of like maybe fitting a trip in and stuff like that. But to go back to what you were saying, um, sorry, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but um, but I was just feeling like even now, as you were saying that, that I don't even know what's going to yeah. come up yet. I mean, I could very well be gone in August, but I could also be gone, gone in August and just come home for like a visit around my birthday or something, you know? So I just feel like I absolutely 100% agree with that as much to my cringe. Yeah, delight. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I would do like want concrete so, answers. 
<laughs> and and uh, I'm not. Uh, I do feel all that. I, yeah. All I'm seeing is is a, a form of calibration that yeah. whatever it is that's still inside of you that maybe insecure, maybe self doubt, maybe self worth, mm -hmm. but but not that so much as up constantly upgrading talent constantly mm -hmm. upgrading courage constantly mm -hmm. upgrading well if this doesn't work try this and i think that this this group of young people that you just had the experience with even mm -hmm. when you showed me the picture i looked at them and i thought you would never know from the smiling faces and the scrubbed looks that these were people uh, that experienced a kind of trauma that, mm -hmm. that you know they've experienced. And so this is, this is where they're calibrating you, preparing you, preparing you, preparing you and everything. But it's all behind, like I said, it's all behind closed, like it, it wasn't even closed doors. It was like I was in a bank vault and, and you were, you know, like behind that. And man, I couldn't, they weren't gonna let, show me anything. You know. Yeah, because they know how I can be. Yeah, <laughs> they know right. how I can be, and I'm fishing. I'm fishing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, right. As best I can. But yeah, I totally relate to that because even as, like I said, I keep thinking about when do I want to travel? How do I want this to look? Maybe just take a little trip here and there, you know, thinking I'm letting the pressure off of when am I going to move? So yeah. I focus more on this. And then now it's just like, yeah, I don't know yet, you know, because yeah. because with this program and then, of course, I still have other things like schooling and, you know, um, courses and stuff that I'm taking that I want to do as well. And, you know, that's why I kept saying I'll wait until August and kind of see then, you know, yeah. as far yeah. as what I do, because and I just feel like I'm still building, like you said, I'm still calibrating. I'm still just um, getting my feet wet with all of this. So and let them yeah. effectively tell you instead of you you know going going in that that little web of hysteria of when 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 you know don't do that because again you're driving yourself crazy uh with that instead of just taking care of the issues of the day and right now the issue of the day is this next 10-day class so mm -hmm. when that ends there might be another one waiting for you you know, and work towards that because, mm -hmm. because you can then put that on your letters that you send out mm -hmm. saying, I am currently doing yeah. this. It is moderate success because occasionally a glitch comes in, you know, with a rainstorm. So, mm -hmm. you know, so, so it's, you, it's, it's like, you're not only took an abstract idea you made it happen mm -hmm. and they you know they're and and you're going to get that across to them and they're going to be they're going to see that you made it happen and that you're 100 percent sincere in this so you can't um you know you you can't say nothing's happening christy yeah you absolutely cannot do that do that to yourself and say oh, because i'm not meeting my goals you're taking incremental small step towards your goals. Maybe they're yeah. not the steps you wanted to take because mm -hmm. you wanted to be overseas at this point, but you're not there. So yeah, for whatever reason, they don't want you there yet. You know. Yeah. And I'm just even I can see that even applying to just today of just this teaching and stuff, because I I mean I had it all laid out, talking points, everything. I was, you know in a groove and everything else and then it was just it got like shut down that rainstorm took it out no volume you know the speaker wasn't working so going off of a cell phone you know just it just it looked like a hot flipping mess for my first day i'm not gonna lie no but no I even, but i can look even just stepping away from that and just seeing their smile smiling faces and seeing how happy they were there to be you know to be there and to have this time and everything else i mean i kind of have to remind myself and i do remind myself of that because 
I mean, that's what keeps me going and not feeling like a yeah. failure for two seconds after just the first day, knowing that I've worked so hard on this and I have so much to give them and so much value, yeah. you know, and, um, and, and to and, learn from them as well. And so right. I'm, I'm just so excited and looking forward to it, but also scared, like so bad, <laughs> you but know, but if, at the same if, time, it's going. It's, it's beautifully too. remember spirit is in control spirit yeah. is as they shut it down because that was as much as the group could absorb for that time frame that was as much as they could absorb so you weren't meant to to come in with all of it otherwise mm -hmm. it 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 would have happened it would have gone through the, yeah you know, and everything but now you have something brand new to write about brand new to contact and yeah. you can you don't have to you know uh write a huge a lovely paragraph accentuating that accomplishment mm -hmm. you know right up front yeah this is what i've done this is what's happened mm -hmm. and everything and it would have been better in person but <laughs> we're we've accomplished this but do it after the 10-day class is done okay? yeah so do it at the end Okay. Yeah, because towards the end of July, that's when I'll be gearing up the email the again, group. you know, right. to send the next um, donor, you know, request Update. letters out. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So good. I'm I'm glad you're you're in agreement with that. All right. Okay, sweetie. Uh, I, is that it? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's let's do our closing prayer, and. Um, and again, if you're able to donate, like I said, we're in desperate need of donations. So I really greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I know in the past, um, uh, we've had many, many more. I, I expected at least 20 odd people online, but I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to deal as intimately as I could with the three of you. Uh, and and again, I, I, I never question what, comes in front of me uh this is this is what it was supposed to be and this is what it was so i'm very very happy for that but very gently close your eyes and we'll give our thanksgiving to mm -hmm. the angels the archangels the ascended masters the reiki masters but most especially master jesus and we ask for healing for the following the new grandbaby that is going to be born within two weeks or is due within two weeks, Juno, Wells Jones, the Jones family, the Sweeney family, the Sarnopis family, the Ukrainian conflict, Putin, the entire committee for the, um, the January 6th committee, that they share their light, especially with those who need it, and anybody else that is in desperate need of prayers right now um, that maybe has not come to the forefront. Okay. And Jennifer, and you can unmute yourself in offering your prayers. Okay. Um, I'd like to send healing to my parent, John and Mary and Ukraine. Excellent. Thank you. And Alice? Um, my parents, all my friends, for the entire United States, especially with the Roe versus Wade, everybody around the globe that needs healing, all the, um, the hurt children inside of even adults, the children, inner children, everybody. Thank you. And Christine? I would like to send healing to my dad, to my mom, to my grandmother. Um, to John and Sam, to Cricket, to myself, um, to everyone here today. Thank you, Alice, so much for this. Um, to everyone that's in need, to Gaia, and to the Supreme Court Justice. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And we ask that the angels, archangels, ascended masters, Reiki masters, join us in, and our ancestors join us in sending healing 
to our intercessions and anyone or anything else that needs it, certainly Mother Earth. And everybody on this planet that may feel lost, alone, abandoned, or betrayed. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the name of I am. Amen. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you all. And uh, I'm just so happy to reconnect with you. So yeah. thank you so much, Alice. This was great. Even though it was a small group, it was